I want to I want to thank everybody for coming out to honor this soldier Henry D. and uh, I appreciate everybody that, that's come that's come out. Uh, my name's Will Osborne. I'm with the John Mickle Henry Kane Sons of Confederate Veterans out of Russell County, Virginia, and uh, we was asked to do this uh, ceremony, and it's quite an honor to do one for this Confederate soldier. Uh, I want to, uh, I'm not going to be like the preacher to beat around the bush asking for uh, when he passes a plate. We do have a donation box down here, and we buy all crosses and we do different things. If, if anybody wants to donate anything, feel free to put something in there. If you don't, don't worry about it. So, uh, and, but I'll guarantee you anything that we did is used for uplifting the Confederate soldiers. And I'm going to ask, what's your name? Mr. Pastor Stouty to uh, ask a blessing on this soldier. Thank you all for being here. Precious Father, we thank you for the example of Henry and for others that were like him, who left home, family, and pursued to defend something that was greater than themselves. They gave their all. And now, Father, let us never need fear that none of our lives are not important. Because these 150 so years since these men gave their lives, we're still remembering their, their memory and their words, their mouths may be closed, but still their words can live on. Precious Father, we remember the, of another, the words of another one, of Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Any man who believeth in me, yet shall he live. Thank you for that promise of Jesus, and thank you for all that are gathered here to honor the memory of Henry and all of the others that died for a noble cause. Father, help us to remember how good you are and, and to place our trust in you and to know that family and friends and community is what holds this nation together. Forgive us of our sins and help us to walk in the footsteps of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. i like to read a a prayer that was found on a Confederate soldier, a casualty of the war at Gettysburg. No one knew his name, but I think I'd like to share these words with you. I asked God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I asked for help that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I was asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. I was given weakness that I might feel the need of God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing that I asked for but got everything I had hoped for. Almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered. I am, among all people, most richly blessed. Amen.
out on the bagpipes. It'll get your Celtic blood bowling on it. <laughs> I want to recognize the different uh, champs that uh, are, out, are here today. Uh, Bill Dennison, he is, uh, uh, is over a six brigade commander. Uh, Bill, you want to say a word? You're going to be speaking later. Anyway. I'll, I'll uh, save it. I think there's enough hot air out here today. But, but we, we appreciate Bill. We went a long time without a, without a commander. We got some more camps. Chester? I'm Lieutenant Colonel Vincent A. Witcher Camp, 1863, Grundy, Virginia. And at Witcher Camp, hey, we do a lot of grave dedications together, and, and I really appreciate it. Okay, good. Appreciate you all. Yeah. Uh, General Henry A. Wise, uh, Wise County. Well, the James Keeling, Camp 52, Bristol, Tennessee. We've got camp from Virginia and Tennessee. You're going to have a camp first. Okay. Yeah, a little salt and home going. No. Going for Terry there with me. Any other any other camps I miss? Pretty good turnout, Bill. That's two in a row. Y'all doing good. Good group. Also, we like to, any of the uh, United Daughters of the Confederacy. Uh, I know you, you're in the chapter. Johnson City, 754. Any other UDC camps? Now, some of you may, you know, you may not know that if you have a Confederate ancestor, you can join the Confederate veterans or you can join the United Daughters, and uh, it's a worthy cause. Another group I'd like to acknowledge here is, is everybody in law enforcement. Raise your hand, please. I know we have some of you. Uh, I'd like y'all a lot to give me a ticket, and then I, <laughs> I fuzz up at you a little bit. Y'all under siege right now, and a lot of bad things have been said about you, but we appreciate you and appreciate what you do. Just give them a hand. <laughs> also, I want to acknowledge all the veterans. All the veterans, please raise your hand. Got a bunch of them. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for your service. I don't guess we don't have any World War II veterans, do we? They're about, they're about all gone. When I was a little boy, I remember World War One I worked with World War II veterans, and now they're, they're leaving here to quick pace. We got any Korean veterans? Yeah, my dad. He's Korean World veterans. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Korean War vet. My father was also a Korean War vet. We got some Vietnam veterans. Thank you all. Thank you. We got any Gulf War veterans? First Gulf War. And I guess now our war, the War on Terror. We got any anybody here? I want to thank y'all for your service. We want to honor our American veterans. You know, Henry Neves was an American, American veteran too. Uh, if you listen to what some people say, he was some kind of a traitor or something. But by an act of Congress, he was an American veteran, and he needs to be honored as such. And all of them need to be honored as such. This uh, tearing down their monuments and, and, uh, and saying they were traitors, it's not right. We need, we need to stand up against that. <coughs> all right, we've got the charge. Who was this one to read the charge? Can't. This is why we do this. Just a second, Mr. Richard, I want to say something here. Uh, you know, the Confederate soldier was around for about four years. And I'm going to tell you, they, they, they fought against heavy odds, and they usually won. They went out and fought, but they were starved out, and they run out of men. But when the old Confederate veterans, after the war, they formed Confederate veterans groups. And as they began to die out, they realized that there was nobody else to carry on the name of the Confederate vet. So what did they do? They went to their sons. And they, and they said, you know, we're all dying off. We want you to carry on our good name. Because if nobody defends us, they'll lie about it. How true was that? How far ahead did they see on that? Well, they'll say we're traitors. We fought for a terrible cause. 
So we as the son, we defend their name. Because nobody else will defend them. And this is the charge that was given to us while we do that. Charge to the sons of Confederate veterans. To you, sons of Confederate veterans, we will commit the vindication of the cause for which we fought. To your strength will be given the defense of the Confederate soldier's good name, the guardianship of his history, the emulation of his virtues, the perpetuation of those principles which he loved and which you love also. And those ideals which made him glorious and which you also cherish, remember, it is your duty to see that the true history of the South is presented to future generations. Okay. That's what we're charged with. Alright, sir, you want to read the real the sun? This is one of my favorite poems. We are the sons. We are the sons, the keepers of history. Honoring their names is now our destiny. Preserving the shrines to the battles they fought. Assuring their sacrifices was not for naught. Upholding their honor with Southern pride. Keeping their values for which they died. The blood of these patriots through our veins now runs. Be proud of our heritage for we are sons. Well, anybody wouldn't be proud of a rebel ancestor, I don't know. I'm going to do a little history on the flags, the Confederate flags. Before the war between the states, you know, most people considered their state as their nation. This country was founded by 13 nation states. And as each state was added, they considered themselves a nation state. And this is Virginia's. And it says six semper tyrannus, which means thus ever the tyrant. And you have Miss Virtue standing on the neck of a tyrant. Now, this is not Miss Liberty that's up there in the New York Harbor. There's a difference in Miss Virtue and Miss Liberty. Miss Liberty says, you know, come everybody. Anybody that wants Liberty can have it. Miss Virtue says Liberty is for those that will fight for it and those that will stand against tyranny. So, you know, in this age of political correctness, I'm surprised that. Uh, They've not come out against the Virginia flag. Because that's probably not politically correct. You just killed somebody. And I'm afraid that you know, the tree huggers are to wonder they're not crying about that. But uh, this is Virginia. She's the mother of presidents. And she's went wayward here lately, in my opinion. Uh, I read an article that said 51% of the people in the state of Virginia wasn't born here. I think most of them must have come out of New York City. Too close to Washington D.C. and they, uh, you know, I think they, they get in their politics and whatnot a lot. But, but this is Virginia, and I know that Henry was in Tennessee. He probably felt the same, but he came back to Virginia. But when Virginia seceded, her sons took up arms against the invader and against the tyrant. He said, "Well, did they fight against the United States? They did." Did they fight to overthrow the government? They did not. They fought for their own freedom and their own destiny. So they're all heroes in my opinion. <clears throat> this beautiful flag is the Bonnie Blue. <clears throat> now before the four states seceded, this flag was used in West, uh, West Florida when they uh, we're trying to break away from Spain before they part of the United States. And they, they use this flag here. This is a, a flag of rebellion, blue background, and a single star. Later, Texas adopted a flag quite a bit like it when they became an independent country, and a, a single star. And when states were meeting and talking about secession, the they would fly this flag. It meant that they were was a secession meeting going on. And South Carolina adopted it and said when they first seceded, said if nobody will stand with us, we'll stand alone. Single star. When uh, 
Mississippi seceded, they raised this flag at their at the Capitol in Jackson. And there was an Irishman that saw it raised and was so moved, he wrote the song the Bonnie Blue Flag, which is a very popular song from the South. So all these flags are southern flags and they could all be flown throughout the world. I'm looking for the for the first night. This was the first flag of the Confederacy. This was the government flag. This is what they adopted. Seven states formed the Confederacy. Virginia had not succeeded yet. And they formed the Confederacy. And they, if you notice, this flag looks a lot like the American flag. And there was a reason for that, because they were American. They figured they'd just be two countries, two countries on, the, on this continent. Uh, you know, they, they would want to get along and find the Yankees. They would want their own country. And they they just flag look quite a bit like the American flag. This one's got seven stars because the seven states were formed the Confederacy. They had the South Carolina, Georgia, uh, Florida, Louisiana, Texas, and Alabama, Mississippi. And uh, they formed the Confederate States of America. When uh, Lincoln asked the troops to force uh, the top station they got back into the Union, Virginia, North Carolina, uh, Arkansas, Tennessee, didn't know they had a right to secede, so they refused to send troops and they joined the Confederate. They were left in the So you'll see some of these with seven stars and some of them with 13 stars, and, uh, but they're all, you know, they're going all throughout the world. But that's the first national <laughs> <coughs> During the Battle of First Manassas, when the troops, they had their uniforms, but I mean, they had all kinds of uniforms on. And, uh, nothing was, uh, you know, kind of a standard or whatever. And at one point, the Confederates was coming across and carrying the first night of the flight. And the guard saw him coming and he couldn't tell who was going. Confederate flag or an American flag. He said if it's the American, it's the Yankee who's going to be the Confederate. So they came up with an idea to get a flag that was separate. They could sing it to the bit. This is the flag that came up with. It's called the battle flag. Never had anything to do with the government. It's a soldier flag. It's a soldier An army in Northern Virginia, it was a square flag. I guess they did that with the on the But it was a square flag. And the battle and, and Tennessee carried some of the uh, rectangle flags. You know, this was the version of the uh, Army of Northern Virginia. It had 13 stars, had 11 of the states that succeeded. It also had a star from Kentucky and from Missouri, which both had uh, governments in exile. That was the that was the soldier's flag. I may come back to that. <coughs> After a while, they didn't. Some people didn't really like having this American-looking flag, so they got the second national flag. This is also called the stainless banner, and all it is is just a white flag with the metal flag in the corner. And this is the second night, so if you saw the movie Gettysburg, you've seen flying a lot of these. And I think this is adorned the uh, top of the stone wall. This was, uh, this was the second night. The other thing I'd like to say about the first night, but, and I really don't care what they have to take place. I don't know if you take place. This is the tallest ball. Not that. That's the this is the tallest bar right here. I know the new tracks are going to have a good battle flag. I guess they're going to carry the tallest bar and put it on. The last flag of the Confederacy, and I guess this is the flag to this day, is the third national. 
what it was, the, the second national, if it wasn't unfurled, and it showed all that white, it looked like a flag of surrender. So they just put a, a red stripe on the end of this one. And they called this one the Bloodstained Banner because of the red stripe. But it wasn't in service too long. I think it was 1865 when they adopted it. So there wasn't a lot of them, but this would be the flag, the life flag of the Confederacy. I want to say something about the battle flag. You know, you see a lot of hatred towards this flag. They say it's a racist flag and all that. This is a soldier flag. This is a flag to be proud of. You know, I don't care what people say. And I know that the Klan and other people who look on this flag, they fly the American flag too. No racist. There's going to be racist, they don't matter what you do. This flag should belong to the state of the state. This flag, it, this flag is a flag to be proud of. People want to, want to put it down, they want to take the flag and it's a race piece and it's not. Those men, I doubt Henry Knees, I don't think he owns the flag. They had five grandpas that were fought for the South, they didn't let them own the slaves or not, but one day they carved him off the flag. So, it's just, uh, their flag that the flag they proud of. It don't matter what people say, people don't understand, but it's up to us to, to defend it. You know, so. All right, we're going to read another poem, I Am Blood Flag. Another good one. I Am Their Flag. In 1861, when they received their rights to be threatened when those who would change the nature of the government of their fathers were placed in charge and threatened with change, they could not accept the mighty man of valor began to, be, began to gather. A band of brothers native to the southern soil, they pledged themselves to a cause, the cause of defending family, firesides, and faith. Between the desolation of war and their homes, they imposed their bodies and they chose me as their symbol. I am their flag. Their mothers, wives, and sweethearts took scissors and thimbles, needles and thread, and from silk or cotton or calico, whatever was the best they had, even from the fabric of their wedding dresses. They cut my pieces and stitched my seams. I am their flag. On courthouse lawns and picnic groves, at train stations across the south, the men mustered and the women placed me in their hand. Fight hard when if possible. Come back if you can, but above all, maintain your honor. Here is your symbol, they said. I am their flag. They flocked to the training ground and the drill fields. They felt the wretched sadness of leaving home. They endured sickness, loneliness, boredom, bad food, and poor quarters. They looked at me for inspiration. I am their flag. I was at Sumter when they began in jubilation. I was at Big Bethel when the infantry fired his first volley. I smelled the gun smokes along Bull Run in Virginia and at Belmont along the Mississippi. I was in the debacle at Fort Donaldson. I led Jackson up the valley. For seven days, I flapped in the air Determined out of James River's bottom as McClellan ran before Richmond. Denny Johnson died for me at Shiloh, as with a thousand others. His glazed remarks, sign on to me. Without a name, unknown. I am their flag. But if ammunition gone, they defended me along the railroad bed at Manassas of throwing rocks. I saw the fields run red with blood at Sharpsburg. Brave men carried me across Doctor's Creek at Perryville. I saw the blue bodies covered with Marie's Heights at Fredericksburg and the gray ones fall like leaves in the round forest at Stones River. I am their flag. I was a shroud for the body of Stonewall after Chancellorsville. Men ate rats and mule meat to keep me flying over Vicksburg. 
I tramped across the wheat field with Kemper and Armstead and Garnage at Gettysburg. I know the thrill of victory, the misery of defeat, the bloody cost of both. I am their flag. When Longstreet broke the line at Chickamauga, I was in the lead. I was the last off the lookout mountain. Men died to rescue me at Missionary Ridge. I was signed by the wild car that burned to death the wounded in the wilderness. I was shot to tatters in the bloody angle of Spotsylvania. I was in it all from Dalton to Peachtree Creek. And no worse place did I ever see than Kenny Saw in New Hope Church. They planted me over the trenches at Petersburg, and there I stayed for many long months. I am their flag. I was rolled in blood at Franklin. I was stiff with ice at Nashville. Many good men bade me farewell at Sailor's Creek. When the end came at Appomattox, when the last Johnny Reb left Durham Station, many of them carried fragments of my fabric hidden on their body. I am their flag. In the hard years of so-called reconstruction, in the difficulty and despair of years that slowly passed, the veterans, their wives, and sons and daughters, they lived. They kept alive the tales of valor and the legends of bravery. They passed them on to their grandchildren and they to their children. And so they were passed to you. I am their flag. I have shrouded the bodies of heroes. I have been laid with the blood of martyrs. I am enshrined in the hearts of millions, living and dead. Salute me with affection and reverence. Keep undying devotion in your hearts. I am history. I am heritage, not hate. I am the inspiration of valor from the past. Look away, Dixieland. I am their flag.
Bill, you want to give a history of the 40 code? Just do whatever you want, I don't have a history of the two regiments with which Henry Meade served. What I do have is a history of Henry Meade with those regiments. He was born in Ash County, North Carolina in 1835 and moved to Hancock County, Tennessee, where he was living at the time of the outbreak of the war. In November, on November the 5th of 1861, he enlisted in the 43rd Tennessee Volunteer Infantry Mounted. He served with that regiment until the surrender in Vicksburg on July the 4th, 1863. His service record shows him present at every muster from the time he enlisted until the surrender. Pemberton surrendered the Ark of Vicksburg Garrison on 4 July 1863. Private move was paroled on the 9th of July. We have a copy of his uh, parole in his record. Now, like many other Confederate records, you can find various spellings of the names. My own ancestors have half a dozen different spellings of their various names, the same as the case for Private Neve. He enlisted, when he enlisted, his name was spelled N-E-E-D-E-S. But by 1863, when he enlisted in the 43rd, I'm, a, <coughs> I'm sorry, the Mounted Guard from the 4th Congressional District of Virginia. The spelling had changed to N-E-A-D-E-S. I don't know why that is, unless when he enlisted in Rogersville in 1861. Like so many uh, rural boys at that time, Henry was illiterate. He couldn't have told them how to spell it. Right? But he was rolling off from more than likely to spell it phonetic. It doesn't matter. He served honorably uh, almost the end of the war. After the surrender on, uh, in Vicksburg to approximately 30,000 prisoners from Vicksburg, Island Number 10 were loaded onto barges, transported down the Mississippi River, and loaded on the ship bound for a city port in Virginia, which is now hopeful. At some point there, those prisoners were exchanged. The next record we have of him is when he enlisted in the Mounted Guard in Denwood County. December of 1863. He served with the Guard until uh, October 31st of 1863. Apparently he returned to Hancock County where he had a son born in 1860. That's the last record we have on him. Although we know that uh, the name spelling was different. It's just about tracking the last county to right here. Typical of so many of the prisoners from the Army of Tennessee that were transported to Eastern Virginia, probably deliberately to keep them from burning to their own homes.
before you could teach them to the master. He had, uh, uh, he had lived in North Carolina as Bank of United, Daughters of the Confederacy and the Son of the Confederacy, for their assistance and welcomed them to this hollow ground. Thank you. I have the laying of the roof. Larry, you want to place the on the cross? Ready. Aim. Fire. This is so wonderful. So, so wonderful.
program just say the song Dixie. Everybody go in and sing this, and then we're going to do a rebel deal at the end of it. I'm not going to start it. I thought I saw you singing about it. Just go ahead and start us off. Huh? <laughs>